what you normally do and mm -hmm. turned to a baby. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Well, hello. Welcome to Katie Sue headquarters. Well, what an exciting hour we've got with Emma Harbottle. <laughs> Have you seen this creature in front of her? Can you believe that she's actually made this? But made it using some of our fabulous moulds. So what I want to know is, Emma, mm -hmm. how did you get started doing these kind of things? Um, I'm just completely self-taught. Uh, no, I mean, I've just... I've I got a grade B in art, but I've just always loved it. Always loved making things. People ask me to make things, and I just make them. Well, <laughs> apparently, Emma came to our attention because one of the girls had known her, and Emma had made some dragon eggs, hadn't you? Yeah. Um, Tell a little tale out you were telling me because I love this oh. about the children. Oh, uh, which ones that to remind me? Here in the eggs. Oh yeah, well, I made them for my shop. I used to have a little shop in the Granger Market. Uh, and there's a certain program that I like that's got dragon eggs in. So I made some lovely kind of like dragon eggs to go with it. And when the kids used to come into my shop, they'd say, um, I'd tell them they were real dragon eggs with like real baby dragons in. And I'd say, if you put your ear really, really close to the dragon egg, you could hear the dragon scratching. But what I used to do is I'd put it next to the child's head and then scratch at the back and like every little kid. Isn't that so me. cool? I, I, just, I just have to do that with my grandkids. I just needed Emma to be able to tell them about that. So then we sent Emma some moulds, the dragon's skin and the eyes, etc. And she comes up with this kind of magic. So before I forget, we'll have got a fantastic bundle on. So Emma's going to be using the um, eyes and the dragon skin, which is the moulds that we've got here. The bundle that we've got, obviously you're going to want both of these, but the bundle that we've got, which is opened until the 28th of February, I think, you've got the claws as well. Now this is free if you're going to be buying the bundle, so don't be going buying things separate because you need to be getting this one. This is a fantastic bargain, so that's the bundle. So we've got Emma to come back in and she brought this she brought this dragon in and of course the first thing we said was, Well, we need you to do it all again because we need to be able to show people how you've just magic this up. So this is the one of the two VTs that we've got ready just to show you the beginnings of how Emma started. So here I'm just drilling into the wood. I just got a kind of like um Get the support for the for the dragon head because obviously he's quite heavy um the first one i made was really really heavy because he was all made from das clay but katie sue introduced me to hardy clay which is really really light and it, it brings out the detail and the mold's beautiful um so here i'm just making the the basic frame of the dragon um so it's all sort of like done from just garden chicken wire that you can buy from any hardware store um, but just to get the basic shape of the dragon. So you already had that idea in your head what you wanted yeah. it to look like. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay, then I'm with you. Um, I once made an upholstered fox for somebody, so I'd already kind of worked with doing a chicken wire sculpture. Right. Uh huh. Uh, that was all made stitched. That wasn't made from clay. But I mean, if I ever make another one of these, well, I will make another one of these because they're fantastic to make. But uh, I'll definitely go with the the chicken wire frame again. Yes. It, it just made it yes. so much easier. Yeah. Um, but look at them just taking form. And I know we've got this all speeded up. So you're putting that silver paper it, in the mouth. It's wide. just to hold it because the, the right. chicken wire that I used was quite thin. Yes. Um, so it was just to kind of, just to hold that shape. I mean, once the clay dries, well, it's just dry. it dries yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, but just while it was drying, just to hold that tin foil just kind of, just held it in place so his mouth was a nice open. So how long would something like that take to dry then? Um, the, the base I used for them, uh, I did use the Das Clay, which you can buy at any 
craft store um, it's, it's easy to get um, but it dries really really hard and I knew yes. that I had to drill in these um, spikes so you do need like a quite a hard frame mm -hmm. um, and I'd, I'd with it being quite thin overnight I'd recommend maybe two nights I would leave it to yeah. dry yeah. And there's no rush if you if you're making it to be honest if I was making it again I would do the the neck and I would let the neck dry for a couple of days right. and then carry on because right. it, it gives it that little bit more support yeah. But obviously I was doing it all on camera, so we just went for it, but it, it's turned out fantastic, so it all works. <laughs> so fabulous that we've got two now, two different sections, if you actually started off and you've just seen that one from making the, the, the shape and forming it. And then they've got another section of VT. It just came out today, I think, hasn't it? Has yes. it? Yes, I'm sure it was just released this morning, the second one. I haven't even watched it myself yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay. <laughs> it will, of course, it will be okay. So what you need to do as well, while I think about it, is to sign up for the newsletter so it keep mm -hmm. you updated about all different things that's coming on and all future things that Emma's going to be doing for us. So shall we take a look at the second part then? Have a look, see oh, what's... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so in this one, wow. yeah, we're using the Kisu Dragon Rolls. Um, so you've just got that bent over and you're just pressing yeah, the shape. It's to get the join. Um, yes. If you bend over the, the, the Dragon Mold in half, it, it, it kind of gets rid of that. It does get rid of the together. hard lines, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? That's yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, the, the skin's lovely. Um, for, this, for the top layer, the top skin, we used the hardy clay. The, I, I used DAS originally for my first dragon because I didn't even know about the hardy clay. But for this one, we used the hardy for the top skin and the detail, the difference in detail, the difference on the detail on the eyes. Just it's just it's just lovely molds to use. Um, and I think the the actual um, the skin is so forgiving, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because as we've just seen, you're able to bend that. Can we yeah. just have a look at that mold? Yeah, yeah. So you're able to bend that. I mean, look at the size of this. This it is. A fantastic mold. Yeah. So you're able to bend that to get into all the little nooks and crannies. And as Emma said, if you've got a harsh straight line, then you can just bend that over and press it over in any direction, and it's going to give you that fabulous skin look. Yeah. So Emma, do you think we could have a look at some of these? Are you actually using the mold? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I'll By have. the way, yeah. has this got a name? Uh, we'll just call Maybe we should get people to send in and oh, see. So yeah. Name the dragon. Name yeah. the dragon. Well, that's a wow. good idea. Oh, wow, Nori. No, really. Look, I'm just going to turn this around because you can see by the size of this mouth, I actually modeled this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to move this out the way. Yeah. Wow, how fantastic is that? And I'll bring these over for you, Emma. And you can talk with through. So you need your air dry clay. I haven't got any air dry clay. Oh, oh we, okay we, then. We've prepped fantastic for this. Yes. Yeah. Well, talk through yes. that one and I'll go and get you some. <laughs> right. So this one's the dragon skin mold. Uh, as you can see, it's mostly just like it's little dimples, but obviously when we push it out of the clay, you're going to get like, the scales. Uh, and then we've also got the, the lovely eye mould as well. The eyes are fantastic. I made my first dragon, I just kept on putting the eyes on and seeing, look what it looks like with the eye, and then taking it off until it was ready. That's, I, I got too excited. <laughs> it's just fantastic. Yeah, I get too Absolutely excited for fantastic. working with these, honestly. So I'm going to talk about the clay. Yeah. So this is a 200 gram. Mm -hmm block of clay and it really does go quite a long way yeah. but it's beautiful when it first comes out a lot of clays that i've used are still quite moist yeah and they take a bit of working but this one virtually within five minutes you're going to be able to use yeah. that so and white it means you can do any color you can yeah. paint over any color because it's it's air dry clay all it is is water and paper so it'll take any medium that you want to paint that you will be able to put on paper so mm -hmm. Okay, Emma. Right. Yes, all right. Can I just say this comes in other colours? Now, we realised when we were painting this one, the difficulty in getting underneath the tongue. And I realised then I should have used maybe the black heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would have been really nice for inside the mouth, just because it's difficult to get in all them nooks and crannies when you paint. So they come in um, 50 gram bags. Mm -hmm. And I think the black, if you're using anything, if you want it to be particularly black, yes, you can do it white and paint it. But any of the like denser colours, so it comes in blacks and browns. dark reds and browns yeah. and all of that kind. And of course you can mix those colours together, but the intensity of the reds and the blacks for yeah. me, it's really worth having a look at. So have yeah. a look on the website. Definitely. I mean, the black's lovely to work with. Right, so this is just cornflour. 
Um, why we're using this is it just it, it it's it gives it a dry finish, so it stops your clay sticking. I mean, we've said the Hardy's lovely to work with, but sometimes mm -hmm. you know it will stick. Yeah. So if you just use a little bit of the dry, uh, the corn flour, dust it in the inside. Not too much. I'll get wrong with Noreen if I use too much. <laughs> she hates it when you use too much. No, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't really care how much you use. But what will happen is if you use too much, then it gets caught up in all of this beautiful detail. detail yeah. And what you don't want to do is to miss out that fabulous detail. Yeah. So it's important that you then turn it yeah. over and tap out the excess. And all that's doing is that's a great release agent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay yeah. then, so what so, do you do from here? All you do is you push a little bit of clay in the middle. Now, you can go to the very edge if you want to. The way I did mine um, was I just pushed it down. I didn't use big patches because uh, right. I don't like this harsh, harsh finish. Right, okay. Uh, I just did it in little bits. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you, again, like we were saying before, you use the edges just to join them all together once you've got it on that so harsh So can frame. we maybe just say that? If you take yeah, that yeah. one out and then do another little bit and we'll be able to show yeah, yeah. the viewers. Now look at this. Just look at that. That is absolutely fantastic. Really, there you can see yeah. the detail on there. That's unbelievable. So we're going to put this to one side and then if you repeat that process, yeah. we could maybe just show because I sometimes think people just don't realise how absolutely so easy, easy this is. Yeah. And you look at a project and you think, oh, no way. That's got a, I can't do that. Well, same as I did when I looked at that. I thought, not a chance I could do that. But when you go onto the tutorials, have a look, the first and second part, and the third part, the final part, is going to be on sometime early next week, so you've got the full set, and you can sit to your heart's content, yeah, rewind have a cup it. of coffee, rewind it, get your friends in, have a look, just show them how easy these moulds are to make. I've got some great jokes, rewind them if you want to. <laughs> So, okay, yeah, then. so it doesn't matter about the shape or anything no, like that? No, not at all. Right. And I mean, it doesn't matter what the back looks like because that's obviously going to be, you're not even going to see this bit, yeah. so it's absolutely fine. So once you've got it all pressed in, turn it over, bend it slightly, just peel it off, and you can see the detail that it comes wow. out at. Okay, then, so we're imagining now that you're going to fit this onto all your right, dragon, yeah. okay? So all I would so do... So what would you have done? Layer it over slightly. Right. Now, the way that I stuck them together was use a little bit of water down the back. I'm going to put a tiny bit there. So just, if I was joining these two together, I mean, if I was putting this on a das, I would cover the whole thing. It yeah. would be wet all along the back. Yeah. But if you're yeah. using it fresh, then that would stick to itself yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so right, so really there, we can work. see that they've got, So obviously what we just what see doing. on there, you've got the two joins. Yep. There. And then if you were joining it together, you'd have to work it in slightly. Right, so we can see the join yeah. there, okay. So I would push that in together so you know it's uh -huh. blended properly. So you know it's not going to fall off or split. Well, see, that's not hard. No. You can do that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Anyone, right, so you're bending this. that over. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to bend that over like that. Push it down the join. Like that. There you see. And then you don't even, you, you barely wow. even see the join there. And once it's painted, like, you will not even notice that at all. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So you would do the same if you were doing dragon's eggs oh, or yeah, anything yeah, like yeah. that? How cool. I'm going to make the dragon's eggs. I'm oh, gonna, oh, really easy. Really, yes, really easy. I can't wait to show Eve and yeah. let her hear that there's a real dragon yeah. inside. Yeah. Because obviously there is. There is. Yeah. yeah. That's you true. can hear it scratching. Yes. Right. <laughs> so we're going to go on to the eyes the now. Eyes. Look at these eyes. So I'm all right, just squish yeah, that yeah. up, I guess. Go so on. that's another thing. So if you weren't sure about it or you weren't very happy with what you've done, then you can just squish that up. Start again. Start again. Yeah. Right. So the dragon's eyes, obviously, we've got the left and the One right. One of each, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm not very good at left and right. It takes me ages. I've actually got to pull it out and go, now, which side does this Me too. So, yeah. Me too. Well, thank God. It's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'd again, just ball it up into a little ball. Put it in the centre and then work it out. And I've already dusted this mould out for you, Emma, so that's fine. E, did I not? Yeah. I thought I just did. Did I not? No. E, sorry. But I had done Learned it. Learned by anyway. my mistakes. That's what I was saying. <laughs> so, yeah, Sometimes, you, you know, you will get away with it, but it's just, if you're finding any difficulty, yeah. take it out again, redust it with your cornflour, tap out the excess, and it'll work a dream. Mm -hmm. There okay, go. So, you just press it to the edges. And again, then just peel it from the back, bend it slightly and peel it. Wow. And there you go. Now look at the detail on there. I love the eyes. Yeah. Absolutely love the eyes. 
I wasn't they sure on them. See that. Oh, when I got this delivered, I thought, oh, God, they look, they, they, look, they don't look anything. But when it comes out in 3D, they're just yeah, amazing. Now, one of the things about this mould is that you can do a small area. So if you wanted to just do a small area inside here, you could. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But then you can extend it, can't you? Because this mould actually has What's still got around? all of this detail around the outside. Mm -hmm. But, of course, then you can do the idea that you've just shown with mm -hmm. about joining it, joining it yeah up. yeah wow. and again all you do is if you had your dragon skin like what i did with the dragon uh obviously I, I put all of the skin all over them and then this just goes on the top and you would just work your way around yes. the edge blend it in and then yeah. get the edge of your dragon skin mold and push it to the edge of his eyes because uh -huh. it's the same pattern that's on yes. the eyes as what is on yeah. the skin oh it's I mean, they work amazing oh, yeah yeah it is they are, it's beautiful they do work really, really well beautiful. together so yeah so we'll dust it with and of course, if you wanted to, what you could have done is just cut the eye out. You can just mm -hmm. use, you know, tiny little sections. Yeah, yeah. Fabulous. I mean, just really versatile. You can see from all the work behind us, the different, the different things you can make. It's not just for making a dragon's head. It's not just for making dragon eggs. It's you just, just textures. Yeah, it it's is re texture. Yeah, really, really good. It's lovely to work with. I think somebody had said they did it. Um, Christmas, bad word at this time of year, but somebody had done a Christmas elf and used that as the bobble. Oh, I think wow. Yeah, I think Christina told me from that. She said they'd use like, like the, the detail from the dragon mold uh -huh. as uh, detail for the fluff on the edge of the sand. Yes, yes well, of, of course, that makes absolute sense. So, again, we're just, you're just going for texture. Yeah. It's just an amazing texture mold. So if you're looking on the website, just make sure that you check out all of the samples that there is. There's an absolute wealth mm. of real inspiration, isn't there? Yeah. So so there you go. I there mean, look at those two together. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Beautiful. And very, very easy to paint, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll show you the painting technique because I've got a little bit left on my dragon to show you today. Um, but once you get that base colour on, picking up the detail, and you really do pick up the detail. The, it's so easy to do. So I think we'll have showing. another little bit of VT showing, mm -hmm. uh, adding the skin to the dragon. I have we already done that. The spice. Spikes. The spikes. Oh. Uh, oh wow. Yes. yes. Come on then. I didn't say the spikes make the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so at the minute you can see he's kind of got a sort of T-Rex look about him. <clears throat> um, the first dragon head that I made looked a bit like a raptor. He was a bit skinnier. Uh, but when we came to do this one, he's got a bit of a fuller neck. He looks a, a lot beefier. Right, so he can looks... I just ask about yeah. the teeth? Had you yeah. already pre-made those? So were yes. they dry? Those ones were already dry. I right. those in from home. So all I did was, I think the teeth are made from Das. And then the gum is made from Hardy. You can see I'm working from the Hardy clay there. Um, and the teeth, but you've got to put them in hard. Because then it gives you that um, bulge around the gums. Yes, yes. Uh, the spikes, I was using Hardy all the way around for that. Um, those larger spikes at the back, they've got um, wire inside. Oh, okay. So then. I had to drill into the back of the dragon uh, and use armature just so it would hold. Because obviously if you try and put a great big lump of hardy clay or any yeah. clay on the back, yeah. it's just going to flop. So you need that wire on the inside to hold the shape. So the length of the tongue then? You, you've got the length of my tongue. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Well, my friend complained because the first dragon I made, he had a very, very small tongue. But that's because <laughs> the dragon I was basing it off had a very, very small tongue. Well, exactly. You see, it's, yeah. it's a dragon that you've got in mind. That's what you've got to think. <laughs> so this dragon, I thought I'd give him a bigger tongue. Um, so whatever he's going to be, Fred, George, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Whatever, whatever he's going to be Jeffrey named. Jeffrey the dragon. Oh, that's cute. If I had a dragon. Okay, then. So are we going to move yes, Jeffrey we'll bring, back we'll over? Jeffrey, back Jeffrey over. until we find another name for him, if anybody else is a... A better name that you like, Emma. So oh. it's going to be up to you to pick the name. <laughs> so, here. right. So where do you start painting something like this? So, what did you do? First thing that we had we did was paint it the base color black. Okay. Black is nearly always my base color. Right. Uh, it's the same with the eggs in the background. It's you, you can pick up the detail if it's black on the bottom. The colour yes. you choose for the top. It, it gives you that out. shade. Yeah, yes, and the depth. The depth. That was, yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, as I say, the eggs on the back, and then you can see the green wow. one as well. I really wanted to make a green dragon because I knew that yes. the green would stand out beautiful. And it does. Yeah, and it, it does. So, whilst we're talking dragon. about this, you were saying that, obviously, some of the, the clay, when it's drying, it does shrink a little bit. Mm -hmm. And in this instance, 
it cracks. Now that's not a problem because you can always fill but, that yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, just paint it but black once you're done. Because it was a real dragon coming out the egg, it was cracking the yeah, egg. Really, really cracked on that one, but it looks I like the deck. Absolutely fantastic. It's been like I a, love an that. accidental a good thing. Yes. A good accident. It's called a happy accident. That's what it is. I have yes. many, many of those. <laughs> happy accident. Yes. <laughs> okay then, so we're, we're painting. Yes. So, so you start off painting it all black. As you can see from the eye here, so this is the There you go. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so, so what did you use for the paint, Emma? Um, what paint was it? Acrylic would be probably best. Right, okay. Um, but I tend to just use tester pots. Yes. Uh, I use tester emotion. pots are fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've always tried to oh, teach people how to do things. Oh, are you going to watch it? Cheaply. Oh, yes. Like, yeah. like you were saying, knowing you thought you couldn't make one of these, I like to show people that you can. You it's can. really easy. Yeah. You just yeah. gotta, you know, you just gotta have that imagination. Well, at first, so, when you first started, when she first started off, I, I was saying, you looks like a, a soft sock puppet. Yeah. puppet. <laughs> but once you've got that in your head, because me seeing that now, I know that it's gonna if be I fine. get that shape, <laughs> yeah. this is me talking, it's if I get that shape, then that's gonna work. So. Yeah. Then it just gives you the confidence to actually even try. It doesn't have to be something as massive as this. It could be a smaller one. Yeah, it could definitely. be a baby one. Aww. But yes, once you know the basis of yeah. it and getting, you know, I from the start yeah. and the confidence to do it, I love that. I think it's suggested on, on one of the videos that if you get to that sock puppet stage, you're doing great. That's, that, that is what you're aiming for. <laughs> you want it to look like a sock puppet at the start. That's what you want to go for. So you just continued painting yeah, that so and then... To All get the it. other colour, how mm -hmm. did you dry brush it? Was it a dry brush? Yeah, so just I uh, just used a basic tester pot of red. Okay. Um, and then what you do is you just get... Where's my good brush? I mean, I say good brush. you got brush. a good brush. Now I was going to say the wrong brush. No, I'm going to say them. <laughs> now as bad as my rolling pin. It's what, they're called well loved. <laughs> so if I get this brush, because this is quite a nice one. Okay. Right. I'll just move this out of the way. Never, you can see it's Come still wet. Come and sit with me, for a little while. Aww. So, um, you can see it's really quite dry. I don't treat my brushes very nice, but that's fine. It's only for dry brushing. So what you need is you need some kitchen roll. Mm -hmm. Like that. And you want to get your red paint. Tiniest, tiniest little bit on the end of your brush. And then you're going to take that paint off. So, take off all the excess. And when you come, I mean, get back in the shot there. Thank you, dog. Where when we you go to paint them, that's it, that's fine there. Yeah, 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 yeah. everyone can see that. So when you go to paint them, you're just going to really lightly just brush over the top, getting all the nooks and crannies. And you can see all it's picking up, it doesn't get in the grooves. There, can you set that? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. It only picks up it the scales. It just goes on the top. Yeah. Yes. Um, so it just picks up every little tiny bit of detail. So that's why it's really important that you've had a base colour. Yeah. Because otherwise you wouldn't have achieved that no, kind of look, no, would yeah, you? Yeah, no, no, definitely. I mean, it looks lovely white, but I mean, yes. it's ferocious black. Oh, totally. <laughs> totally. So, uh, yeah, so just paint over the top of that. But just shift that round because yeah, yeah. all we can see is your beautiful plait there. <laughs> okay, so how's that? I do do a mean plot. Uh, <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> there we go. Wow. Be careful not to put too much paint on. If you put too much paint on, it will go in the cracks, and you don't. You really don't want it in, the, in in between the gaps. You just want it to pick up on the top. I remember once somebody sent me some feedback on one of my dragon eggs that I made, and said, "Oh, the detail in paint," and I thought, "Oh." If only the new. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna move that bit forward uh, so we don't get all your hair in. Like so, that's it. There we go. There we go. Oh wow, isn't he He's just super? So oh, really, oh. you've used very, very little product yeah. just to get that amazing colour. Yeah. And that's what gives you your shading as well, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Wow, so, I love that. Put a little bit extra red around his eye to make it stand out a little bit. There we go. Oh, fantastic is that. Super easy. I mean, wow. it, it, the effect looks amazing, but it, it's that easy, honestly. My kids, if I gave them this brush and said, take all the paint off, there you go. Oh, I could trust them that. to do it. Yeah. There we go. Oh, my word. <laughs> that is absolutely fabulous. So, That's obviously, awesome. you've just continued and gone round mm -hmm. and done all of the outside area. Yep. Absolutely wonderful. Um, so, what do we do next then? 
So next, I'm going to show you how to do the spikes. Oh, the, come on. <laughs> now it's the same sort of technique. Uh, we'll be doing dry brushing again. I'll get a different brush this time though, because obviously we don't want um, we don't want red on the spikes. Um, so the spikes, though, you need we need darker brown. Oh, thanks, thanks, Lillian. Such a good helper. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Oh, no one may I'll spill the paint. I would. So with um, with the spikes, what you want here is you don't want a black base on this one. So you will you will paint a black, you know, when you paint the whole thing black. But the spikes, you're kind of going for a dark brown. So base. when you've done these, mm -hmm. have you scored these with it's some Originally, of the... um, right. obviously, if you watch the tutorial videos. Uh -huh. um, Obviously, you've got the dragon skin, which obviously comes from the dragon Yeah. Wing. When it comes to doing the spikes, I've got one little tool. It's like a little knife. Mm -hmm. just, just one tool. Uh, and if you just score it down, uh, once you're doing the dry brush, it picks up all the detail. So it could be something uh, like a pokey tool or mm -hmm. a Dresden tool, anything, anything like that. But if you want to, before you actually put the spikes on, uh, what I would be doing is trying it out. So do one dry, mm -hmm. get it, and put your marks on. If you're happy with it, then go for it yeah, if not yeah. then you know you can try something different yeah definitely so you've added some water to some just just ordinary paint, standard paint. Mm -hmm. uh, i mean don't use watercolor if you use watercolors it, it, if you spill water on it it's going to spill it, yeah. it, it, you've got to use something that's uh, waterproof yes so for this and i'm just darkening my brown just slightly just to get the color right nice thing about these pots is you can use it as a little you can use the little little yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all my pots are ruined <laughs> <laughs> Right, so there we go. So we've got like a nice dark brown. And we're just going to, this is just the base. I'm just going to move this so this that time. we can actually. Yeah. Yes, you've done that plat really nice. We need to have a look at <laughs> We need just to have a look at this. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> because that's the, the detail that will stay. Uh, so just paint all the way around. In between all the cracks. And it was the same like when I did the tongue. Um, my rolling pin, I think I mentioned it, it's, it's, I never ever clean it so it's got little bits of clay stuck all over it but when you're actually rolling out almost like a mould, it gives you a nice detail. Yes. Um, so that when you paint the tongue and you dry brush it, it just picks up lovely little bits of detail that you didn't even know you were going to get. Um, but it's better than using like a like a really flat, you don't want it yeah. looking really flat. Yeah. You definitely want a little texture on it there. Wow, so I just tip this cool. up slightly, mm -hmm. just so we can get underneath the spike. Oh, thanks Noreen. You're such a good help. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now you can see there's a bit of a bend on these spikes um, that's because we've used the hardy clay. The nice thing about it is it's got a little bit of give. It, even when it's dry, Yes. it, yeah. it doesn't dry solid. That's why I couldn't use it for the base really, because um, you can't really drill into hardy. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's lovely if you want... I wish I'd used it for the, the teeth. Um, uh, because then it would have been a little bit more forgiven. Mm -hmm. He's got a couple of cracked teeth. Cracks well, you know, he's been uh, <laughs> in the wars. He's been chewing on yeah. an awful lot of things. It's the sheep skulls. That's what it is. <laughs> is it? Yeah, yeah. Gets them every time. It's his favourite food. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, if you were using it for smaller um, creations, then you would be okay using your hardy clay. Oh, so yeah. It's just obviously you needed something very oh, substantial to, to hold get the, it. Yeah. Yes, to get the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. So I think the underneath. I mean, we're not too bothered about the underneath because no one's going to see that much. But there we go. We've done it though. Just you know, fabulous. Be good. Absolutely fabulous. So then for the dry brushing, mm -hmm. you need a lighter. So do you have to wait until that actually dries? Or? <sighs> you should. Right. Okay. Then. What what you should do and what we are going to do is you know. Well, I tell you what. What about if we let that dry for a couple of seconds and I'll show you how to do the eye. Come on then. There we go. Right. And then right. we leave the eye to dry. Oh, okay. Go over the spike. And then go back and varnish. Hey, it's just far too organized. Ah, we know, we know what we're doing. Right. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> so for the eye, um, I couldn't find the right kind of emulsion pot, so I've gone for just a little acrylic. And we're gonna use a little palette. Um, 
and this is a nice bright orange. Now the mistake I made the first time I made the dragon, I thought dragons had human eyes <clears throat> and I painted it white. Okay then. And then painted the people black and went, oh that looks ridiculous. <laughs> it's, if you paint your eye completely black, it looks lovely. Even when it's just black, it looks lovely. Yes. Um, so, and my dragon's got bright orange eyes. Fire Let's eyes. just move that around so there you can see. Yeah. yeah. So you can see the detail yeah, on the eye there. Yeah. So I'm just going to mix this orange in. I've got my black handy for the blending. You've got to be a bit more detailed with this. This isn't just a case of just dry brushing straight on. You need to be a little bit more. I'm using a really thin brush for this. Mm -hmm. um, and what you want to do is you want to work from the pupil out. If you put your brush that way, you're going to get the edge of the mould. So it gives it a really nice definition between the pupil. And you won't... If, if you try and go this way... So you let's will, just see if we yeah. can just capture that there. Yeah. So okay. if you if you try and paint it this way, you'll yes. get that paint inside. Yeah, like you can make a mess. Talk. Yes. But if you yeah. paint it back away from the pupil, yes, you get a nice line. It makes it all nice and neat and tidy. And what we're going to do is have it more orange at the top and thinner at the bottom. Are you all right holding that, Nora? Yeah, fine. It's good job it's hardy clear. <laughs> right. There that we wood go. is heavy. I'm just going to bring that there. Yeah. Is that alright? Mm -hmm. So then we're going to go a little bit more across the top. Hold it steady. I know I'll get the blame. <laughs> I'll get the blame if you don't do the line right. Yeah, yeah. Laurie's moved it. Yeah, yeah. It's your fault. Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to blend it in a little. Right, so let's just have a quick look yeah. at that then, Emma. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, he's starting to look ferocious now, isn't he? That's, oh. that's the spikes of the teeth it does. <laughs> right, and then the same for this one. So we're going to, away from the pupil, yep. so you get the nice line across the top. My paint's a little bit lumpy. I'm just trying to get that lump off. There we go. <laughs> so you haven't gone right into the no. outside edge or the inside edge? No, because we're kind of blending it. Okay. So we want it nice and bright and fiery in the centre. In the centre, uh-huh. And then we're going to blend towards like a black on the edge. Right. So I'm just trying to get the basic orange on. And then we'll blend it slightly. I'll show okay. you how to do that. So then just get a tiny bit of... Wow. Clean me little brush. A little bit of black on. Isn't it fascinating? Oh. Then we're just going to blend it out slightly. So what you want to do, what you want to get here is a little bit of wet black paint and a little bit of wet orange paint and then we'll be able to blend So it merges, yes. Yeah. Yes. Clean the black off again. Go back to the orange. And if you want to, definitely go over it next to the pupil just to get that really bright. If you need to give it to keep it coats, vibrant, yeah. yes. Yeah. So you really want it fiery in the centre. Mm -hmm. We go. And again, I think if you were doing this as a, you know, a big project, what you could do is you could just do the eye, leave it to dry, and mm -hmm. then practice and then the painting. Back. Yeah, practice yeah, yeah. the painting. I mean, roll yourself out. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Just do it. Yeah. I mean, they're just they're just gorgeous. And if you if you have a look, there's loads and loads of different ways, as particularly on our website where some of the uh, design team have done. The oh, eyes beautiful. just so different, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And that's what's nice to see is how other people use them. Yes. Well. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I've been following it all week, just seeing what I love that. You see, now you've got just <laughs> the lines on there, haven't you? You can yeah. see that. Just blending in towards the centre there. Oh, I see that makes complete sense. So you've got more red up towards the top of the eye. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm gonna have to hurry up because Noreen's getting all shaky. I can feel it. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Mind I wouldn't want to hold it for this long. That's fine. Yeah. I'm trying to hold my breath. <laughs> <laughs> On the edge of your seat. Yeah. There we go. I think wow. that might look okay. Isn't that just It's just, again, it's just really easy technique. Uh, anyone, honestly, anyone can do this. 
So if you if you done it like this, I mean, mm -hmm. you weren't kind of quite happy with it. Oh, could you black it out over black again? Yeah, then? Well, yeah, yeah, that would be for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I Take love that. 20. <laughs> What I've done this time is I just took all the paint off my brush, uh, so there's not any paint on it at all. It's just a blend that. Yes. Uh, and there we go. I think. I really, if it, honestly, if it was me, I would recommend that you do some dry, do some couple of little eyes dry, mm -hmm. and then just practice your techniques yeah. on them, and then you know use different colours as well. I was just gonna say different that different things, different colours, different paint brushes, even. See which is your favourite. Definitely. Yeah. So there we wow. go, I'd say that looks fine. I don't know what it looks like against the other eye. Does it I match? I think he looks fantastic. Look. Does, does his eyes match enough? Do they go, are they good? Oh! Yeah. They're good to go. Yes. Right, so... You can actually see where he's going now. Yeah, that's marvellous. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's winking anymore. <laughs> so, um, now that we're waiting for this to dry, we can go back Gotta to the go spike. Back to the spike. Because the spike is nice and dry now. So we've timed this lovely, haven't we? Have much so We like it with cloud. You think we knew what we were doing? <laughs> So for the top of the spike, so this kind of colour that we're going for this time. That looks lovely. Makeup. It's almost kind of, you can see it's like, a, you know, like antlers horns mm -hmm. when they get that. Yeah. That's just what it reminds us of. Yeah. I like that. I like that colour. And the nice thing is it doesn't have to be precise. No. Um, well, I mean, that's good for yeah. me as well. Oh, oh. All the time we're getting better. It. <laughs> it just looks like he's been in the wars, you know. And that's so you're doing the same technique again. You're yep. dabbing the brush. Taking all that excess paint off. Yeah. And then all we're going to do is just really lightly sweep it over the top and you can see here that it should. Oh yeah. It picks up the detail but it doesn't go in between those cracks so you get nice. So it doesn't make it too dense looking but again it's giving you that depth yeah. and the look of the texture. It's really important isn't it having yeah. that darker detail underneath. I love that idea, Emma. That's I love it. Whoa, yeah. yeah. And it, uh, it just works really well. It's like I said, it's just so simple. Honestly, anyone can do this. And practice again if you want to make a yeah. spike, same as you did with the eye. You exactly. can always just do I would it separate. Do that. I would do that. Because if you get to a stage where you've made something that you're oh. really proud of, you don't and want you to don't ruin, ruin it. it. Yeah, no, no. But of course, then, as we're saying, you could just paint over it again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. That's, that's a really good technique. I love that technique. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but if I got this far and I didn't like them red, I could always just black all this out Whoa. and start again and doing green or orange. I oh, know, but we love them. Pink's pink. lovely. <gasps> no. Pink. No. 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 no, I don't want paint your dragon pink. No. I think, you know, unicorns, it's all. I in. know, my granddaughter <laughs> would have pink. I think somebody made, did somebody make it? Uh, I saw a... It was a dragon corn, I think she called it. A dragon corn cake. Yes. Yes, that's so on the side. It looks so amazing. yes, that's that's just remind us as well to, to obviously remind you that all of the Katie Sue design molds are completely um food safe. No. So yeah. that you can use them. This oh can you imagine a cake? Can you just imagine? I think it would work as a cake. Oh, I, mean, so do I. I can't make cakes. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this, but I can't make cakes. <laughs> Not at all. But if you wanted to, I think this would make a great, I think the yes. shape of it, you could yes. definitely do a cake yeah. out of this. Well, it's very mm. much exactly the same principle. So if you're using your fondant or anything like that, mm -hmm. then it's exactly the same principle to be able to get that, the skin looking the way it is, to paint your base colour and then to dry brush over the top. Obviously, you would use food safe colours, uh, which you can buy. So, yes. Yeah. That, oh, my goodness. Yeah. This would be a showstopper, wouldn't oh, it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And I think it'd be a nice cake board as well. So yes. I think it's it's made for made for cakes. Yeah. It'd be brilliant. I and of course if you were using for a cake board we'll have a fabulous um wood mould. Ah, wood oh, grain yes. mold. You could use that. For the engine. Yes. That would be amazing. Yes. Absolutely fabulous. Can make an edible cake board. Yeah. <sighs> Imagination's in the wild. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you can buy the lovely, the wood moulds are fantastic as yes. well. They're lovely. I'm going to work with something that, on that next, I think. The next so we've, we've done the skin, we've yes. painted the skin, we've so, done the spikes, yeah. we've done the eye. So, so you can see you left there. That, that's all finished. That is just 
I mean, it's undistinguishable from the ones that were already previously mm -hmm. painted. So that is fantastic. I love that technique. Yeah. I don't love it quite as much as I love the fact that you can hear the dragon in the attic. <laughs> that's that, in the egg. That's just funny. That's so bad. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. my goodness. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. So next, and um, I'm going to show you how to do the um, shine. Yes. You want to make it because it looks a bit dull. Mm -hmm. It looks like he's asleep. So what we want is <laughs> I like to show people how you can do this from home. So I am using a bog standard. I use nail varnish nail all varnish. the time. All the time. Well, sometimes you might need a couple of coats, but sometimes it's just enough because it gives you like a an almost silk finish yeah. on some effects that you're doing. But a couple of coats, wow. Yeah, so we'll start with this eye. I haven't okay. actually uh varnished either, so I can do them both today. Because wow. it's Valentine's Day. My kids have drawn a nice little heart. <laughs> Bless them. So, like I said, you can buy this anywhere. It is just clear nail varnish. Um, I was watching one of the videos the other day and they were using a UV light and it looked amazing. I need to get one. Yes. But if you haven't got a UV light, I don't, exactly. I don't have a UV light. I don't either. I'm going to get one. But yeah. yeah, nail varnish is, is pretty good. Where the UV light comes into play is if you wanted it to be really have a lot of glaze, then obviously because of the shape and the way it is, then if you put too much nail varnish in it once, then that would just dribble. Yeah, it would yeah. look like his eyes were watering. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't, we uh, we don't can't have crying much. dragons. No, 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 no. Where the UV glaze, you could just put that on, put it under your UV light, and then it, it'll dry. So something else that you might consider doing if you're thinking about it, particularly for your, your craft. Maybe you could go into one of them nail shops. And be like, oh, would you like a set of nails? No, can no. I, can I just, just do me dragon's eyes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it would be a talking point, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Give us something different to do. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I'm just doing the little corner of his Oh, I love the smell of that nail varnish. Ah, do you know it makes me feel ill? Does it? I can't even walk past a nail varnish place oh, without I thinking I'm going to pass out. Oh, no, no. It's odd. It gives me a funny feeling. Right, so let's there just go. lift that up so you can see. So no, now he's got a glint in his eye now, Emma. Really brings it to life. Whoa. Really does. Okay, so I'm going to move that round. And we're going to do the other one. Wow. That is just... Oh! The difference. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. I know. Wow. It just brings it to life, doesn't it? It's such a so simple just, thing. We're going to have a look at that. So you can see that there. That's yeah. the before version. Yeah. Okay. So this is, the, this is the eye that I painted the other day uh, on the painting. Um... I think that's, is that the one that's coming out today or is that the one that's due next week? I think the painting one Monday, Bing. I think, ish. Next yes. week sometime. Early next week. Yes. Yeah. So we haven't got a definite date, but definitely next week. So, again, if we just over the top. Oh, look straight away. Yeah. This gives them that nice fiery glint. And it brings out the colour. Yes. As well. It makes it much more vibrant. It does, well. yes. Really makes it a lot more orangey. So if you were doing that, you could have even done something like that on the top. I thought you? about it, you know. Whoa. Yeah, I did think about it and I thought, nah. No, because it <laughs> might look as if he's just had his dinner. We'll just leave it there. Yeah. We'll have him looking at it. Do you know what I wanted to test? And I've never really used it before, so I didn't. But if anybody out there is any good with resin, I, I saw... Oh, I've used resin. You have you? Yeah. I saw a model of a dragon. And what they'd done was they dribbled the, dres the resin from the top of his teeth Yes. And it looked like drool. Yes. And it dried like that. I yeah. thought, oh, I, I would have liked to have given that a go, but I've never used resin. I Isn't didn't want to ruin it. It's fantastic. I mean, look. So at it that. just really brings it to life. It, really it does. certainly does. It's just simple things. Just, wow. you know, anyone can make this, is what I try to get across. I mean, it just. Yeah. Um, I'm absolutely inspired, particularly, if, you know, even if I'm not going to do a dinosaur or a lizard, whatever, it's just. All of the different hints and tips, like the dry brushing, yeah. and how to do those eyes. I mean, those eyes are just absolutely magnificent. As well as the spikes, I love the spikes because I love the colour of it. As I say, it the looks contrast. so, so yeah. realistic. Yeah. Wow, Emma, no. fantastic. So we need you now to have a look. Get the bundle now. Don't forget, if you're looking. On the UK site or the US site, there's still some special offers till the 28th of February. So if you're looking for the bundle, obviously you need what Emma's used, which was the eyes and the skin. That is going to cost you exactly the same as if you order the bundle. 
So order the bundle and get the claws. Absolutely fabulous. And that's just going to finish off your whole collection. So the next thing you need to do is actually make something with it. Take some pictures, email them in oh, to yeah. us and have some inspiration. But if you look at the tutorials, to me, these are completely free. The tutorials, we've had a masterclass from Emma. So you've got three different videos that you can go on to. So go on to the Kitsu website and then look for them. So they've got two at the moment. So one is actually Emma starting how to make it right from scratch. The second one is building up the layers. And then the third one is going to be actually completing it, finishing off. Just all the little hints and tips mm -hmm. that, you know, we don't always get. And we don't always get the time. When you look at something like that, I would look and think, no, can't do that. But I've looked at it now and think, actually, yes. Yeah. Yes, I can do that. So even if you're going to do a small thing, like you're going to do a dragon's egg, maybe have the eye coming out of the egg or the claws or something mm -hmm. like that and then you can get those techniques and maybe build up your confidence so you know the children are going to absolutely love it i think it's fantastic so don't forget the bundle and look for the the last of the tutorials is going to be early next week sometime so emma this has been oh. such fun oh. i love them don't forget <laughs> to send your names in so and emma is going to be able to pick another an alternative name if she finds one that she likes better but until then stay tuned have a look look on the website look for all of the obviously the bundles look for the tutorials and just have a wait of a time emma Aww. it's been great fun thank you thanks very thanks much see you again soon bye it's all right